Hi, this is Chrissy from Jefferson County Foundation. We wanted to remind you that public comment is due tomorrow on the Route 9 sewer project construction stormwater general permit registration application. It's due tomorrow, as I said, Friday, April 17th. There's a form that you can use to easily submit this at jeffersoncountyfoundation.org. We wanted to make you aware of some of the things that need to be addressed with this permit before it is approved. The current application does not comply with even the minimum standards of what constitutes an application for registration under this general permit. For example, the pre and post construction drainage maps, along with the during construction drainage maps, showing the proposed locations of all drainage structures and associated access routes are omitted completely from the application. The application also contains deficient items that were not adequately improved upon request of the reviewer, including stormwater, the Stormwater Pollution Prevention Plan, also known as the SWPPP, and the Groundwater Protection Plan, or the GPP. So we can look here as an example. This is an example from the comments page where the permit reviewer makes comments that need to be addressed by the people submitting the permit application. And we see here that on the 21st, they had to be asked to correct their stormwater um, pollution prevention plan and make it a non-generic one. Um, and then again, had to be asked to correct it so that it conformed um, on the 26th. Of February. We believe that these comments by the permit reviewer were never adequately addressed in the SWPPP. And as we look at the comments related to the groundwater protection plan, they had to be asked on the on the 4th of February to include a groundwater protection plan because they hadn't initially and then on the 21st to correct it and again on the 26th and they asked them to make it a site-specific groundwater protection plan as part of the site-specific uh, SWPPP. And we see that on the left here, um, this is their original groundwater protection plan that they submitted. Um, this is the generic groundwater protection plan. And um, they were asked by the permit reviewer to make it a site-specific plan. And you can see here that they have done that by whiting out the word generic and whiting out the words construction site and handwriting in the words the Route 9 sewer project and rescanning the form in. They also whited out Kristen Salifer's name on the signature portion and Jane Arnett signed. Um, so everything else is the same. It's pretty clear to us that they um, didn't work very hard at making it a site-specific plan and as you scroll through the plan um, they continue to be the same throughout. Um, here we have the third page of the plan and here in the third page of the plan they ask them to um, discuss all of the available information reasonably available to the facility um, or activity regarding these existing things. Um, the existing groundwater quality um, at or which may be affected by the site. And then they list these things that they should discuss um, and they list the things that they should discuss about them and they say to attach um, more information. So as we move through these, the first thing is the closest surface water body. And I've put this map, this is the map from their plans and it says here Elks Branch. And you can see over here um, on their map, here is Elks Branch, and then here is Elks Run. Elks Run is significantly closer than Elks Branch to the project. Elks Run is also the Harpers Ferry um, water and so um, source, and so it has extra protections, um, as you can see here. Additionally, Flowing Springs um, is, is quite close. Um, as well. And so the next thing here is um, is that they have depth of groundwater and they put it as unknown. And if they had done a karst uh, feature plan and investigation, they would likely know the answer to that question. We'll get to that in a little bit. 
Um, known groundwater monitoring wells, they left that blank. The next thing, which is surprising, is known public or private drinking water wells within 2,000 feet. And so um, here on this map, um, the, the path of the sewer is here, right along this um, War Admiral Boulevard here, right along here. Um, and I've marked here 2,000 feet out, and each one of these houses has a private drinking water well. And you can see that they have left this blank. Um, however, this is just one location of many where there are many drinking wells within 2,000 feet, as denoted by this line, um, that, are, that are there, and they list none. Next, it says um, the closest wellhead protection area. And so on this map, you can see that there are several wellhead protection areas. So here's one for the USDA. More importantly, in my mind, here's the one for Fox Glen um, and the elementary school, um, all of which they travel through with their actual site, as well as this large one here, this large wellhead protection area that is outlined here for the Walnut Grove um, utilities wellhead protection area. So although there are several, looks like um, four or five easily here uh, within within 2,000 feet, certainly these four, um, and they have listed none again. So moving on to their, um, their karst mitigation plan. Their karst mitigation plan, although it is short, um, the first thing says, a site investigation shall be performed by the contractor as noted in the latest version of the Chesapeake Stormwater Network Bull Bulletin number one, which I have here, and most of you are probably familiar. Um, this should, and then this the permit writer wrote in and says this should be considered the minimum requirement um, applicable to all karst areas in West Virginia, which clearly Jefferson County is one. And so they clearly are going to follow or plan to follow all of the, um, uh, of the recommendations in this document. So as we look at this document, it requires that several things be done to evaluate the karst. The first is a primary, a preliminary site investigation, followed by a detailed site investigation, soil borings as necessary, and then drawing up an evaluation and plans. The important thing here is that it requires those plans be submitted, that they be submitted with the application for the stormwater construction uh, registration. That has not been done here. We do not have any attachments um, to the GPP of these plans of the evaluation that has been done of the site. So why, why is this important? Let's just um, kind of bring it back around. Um, as we all know, this area is heavy in karst, and um, what we have here is a diagram of a cover collapse sinkhole, which you're probably all familiar with at this time. Um, but we can imagine a scenario where we have a situation like this, um, and they come along and they put the sewer line in up here, um, unknowing that this is happening below. If um, an investigation hasn't been done, as described on the previous page, there would be no way of knowing that this was happening. And the sewer line could be put in up here, and then this could progress over time and lead to a situation where a cover collapse sinkhole could lead to failure of the sewer line like this, as is demonstrated in this picture, and could lead to um, catastrophic failure of the sewer line, but then also contamination of the groundwater with the sewage. So I'd like to remind everybody to um, go to the website, jeffersoncountyfoundation.org, um, or you can submit it on your own and submit a public comment on the Route 9 sewer project, um, construction, stormwater, general permit, registration application. Um, again, the due date is tomorrow, February 17th. Thanks so much. Have a great day.